Hey everybody, it's Chris from Georgia. Hope everybody's doing good. Thought I'd do a quick video. I just got back yesterday, my wife and I, from the Cleveland Slot Car Show. And boy, was it great. We had a, a whole Saturday spent with Pro Tinker Toys, and they had live races and auctions and lots of stuff for sale. So, and Saturday, or Sunday was the show, and just more slot cars than you could imagine. Anyway, this picture here, this is Ryan from Pro Tinker Toys. His dad sends out pictures all the time with for the love of Mike on it or something like that. But I thought you should see Ryan. He's the other half of that Pro Tinker Toys up there. So there he is. It was great seeing you, Ryan, at the show. So anyways, what I'm really going to do is just show you what I got. I got some pretty cool stuff. So I'm going to unbox it, or unbag it, because I've seen a few other people doing these videos lately of unboxing and unbagging. I know Scott's House of H.O. Racing, Scott's done them, and Dan up at Slot Valley Racing's done them. And, um, so I'm going to do a couple. So anyways, here's what I bought. I think I got six cars. This is the first one. It's a Cheetah Replica. This uh, girl casts these bodies, and then this guy, or her dad, puts the puts the chassis in them. But they're really good looking, and it wasn't that expensive. It's like twenty five bucks, something like that. That's my first one. What else we got in here? Well, I got some chassis. I got some Jag Hobbies chassis. This one's a direct replacement for a, uh, an original Aurora Thunderjet with a canned motor in it. I'm looking forward to trying these. And I also got a replacement for all the world bodies where the chassis just don't want to work right. These are going to be fast. I just know it because Jag Hobbies are fast. So, oh, here's a cool little... I set out to get three things, and that was it. This was one of them. I wanted this. I wanted a couple more F1s, so I got that one. Hopefully, I'm bringing it into view correctly. There's the bottom. Looks like a G plus or a G chassis. Not quite sure. And then um, I got this other F1. So this is the second one. I said I wanted to buy two. Like I said, I was only going to buy three cars. So I got this one. It's a Kmart. Fairly common I, from what I hear. Uh, it's got a... Um, 440 X2 chassis in it. And those are good chassis. Should run real good. Looking forward to getting that on the track, which I'm going to do as soon as this video is over. And then I got some unexpected cars. I got this one. And Brian had these over there on his table. And uh, actually Adam was working the table. He was kind enough to Hold them for me. And it was a great meeting, Adam. Great meeting you, Adam. So he held these two for me. Those two are going to go great with my other two that are the multicolored ones, the Mega G Pluses. These aren't G Pluses. These are Megas without the Plus, I'm pretty sure. But they're in fantastic condition. And, well, that one's never seen a track. This one, this one's never seen the track. I'm not sure, but I think these were set cars. But anyways, they're mine now. They're in my collection. And then the other one that I've been looking for quite a while to get, this one guy had it there. And for a very reasonable price. This is the uh, Daytona Cobra Rust Kit Limited Edition car. Let me see if I can get it out of here. There we go. And I've wanted one of these since I first saw it. 
There it is. This one, as well, has never been on the track. But that's going to end, because all my cars go on the track, at least one lap around. So, there's that one. So, those are the six cars I bought. No, I bought seven. Shoot. I bought this old Tyco Porsche. I, 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 well, I wanted a Carrera in my hands. So, I was going after that red, black, and white one that AFX made with a magnet traction chassis, but I saw this one first and I bought it instead. I don't know if I made a mistake. It's got a Tyco Pro chassis, unlike one I've ever seen. I've seen the kind with wipers and the kind with buttons, but this has little pickup shoes and this one's worn through. So I guess I'm gonna have to do a search and try and find some pickup shoes for this thing. Um, because like I said, that one's worn through. We'll see how it goes on the track, but the body is in excellent shape. And for 20 bucks, I couldn't go wrong with that car. He says it runs. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Yeah, runs on battery. So those are the cars I bought. Got a tune-up kit. Got the Jag Hobbies. What else did I buy? I bought, oh, I bought these cool telephone poles. Um, the part where I put my track over to cork, because it's flat, I'll be able to put these telephone poles up. But I'm also gonna use them to run the wires from my uh, lights. When I put those up, I'm actually gonna string a two strand of like 24 gauge 28 gauge, something like that wire, to get over to where I'm gonna control them. So I'll consolidate them in a hidden part underneath the track. I can't drill holes in my track, or in my board, because it's a um, ping pong top. And then, I have this bathroom over there for the pedestrians. I bought this a walking bridge to go over the track. I think it's for a train. But it's HO. It's a footbridge, and I'm gonna have to put it put it together. And that's just one more thing of telephone poles. So that's what I got from the Cleveland Car Show. What a fun time! Um, if you ever get a chance to get there, I think it's every April and every um, October. Uh, I, my wife wants to go back in in April already. She had a good time. She met a lot of people and knows who I've been talking with and listening to, and uh, it was a it was a great time, it really was. So I encourage you to go if you've never been. So that's it for this video. I'll end it now. Have a great day and thanks for watching. And I'm gonna go get these babies running on the track. See ya.